A story is told that during the bombing of a city in World War II, a large statue of Jesus Christ was severely damaged. When the townspeople found the statue among the rubble, they mourned about this statue because it had been a beloved symbol of their faith and of God's presence in their lives. Experts were able to repair most of the statue, but its hands had been damaged so severely that they could not be restored. Some suggested that they hire a sculptor to make new hands, but others wanted to leave it as it was, a permanent reminder of the tragedy of war. Ultimately, the statue remained without hands. However, the people of the city added on the base of the statue of Jesus Christ a sign with these words, You are my hands. We are his hands. What that means to me is we are here to serve our sisters in any way we can and we are supposed to help them feel his love through our acts of service. So any way you can do that, you are acting, you are his hands by showing love to your sisters. I was probably, I was trying to think, this must have been about 25 years ago. My kids were still in school. I was working in a long full-time job and I was busy all the time. So then I got called to be in the Relief Society Presidency. And I, I really thought, oh, great, you know, I'm a counselor in the Relief Society. The first thing she asked me to do was go with her out to visit some old lady I had never heard of. And she lived out off of 224 somewhere in an old trailer. Not a mobile home, but a trailer. And she lived in that trailer, and her house had all these vines growing around it and everything and we went in there and um, she she was the nicest old lady. I, I thought about this about service and I thought that's the first time I really helped somebody that wasn't just somebody that needed that I liked that was my friend that I was helping was somebody I didn't know I didn't want to do it and it, it made me grateful for her it gave me a love for her that I didn't even know is in me, and not that I've become a perfect person in doing service for others, but I always remember back that that was like a turning point. One of the most difficult times in my life was when I broke my leg, and I couldn't do anything that I wanted to do. I, I was overwhelmed with my house and with the kids, and one day someone came through my back door, of course I couldn't answer the door, I couldn't get to the door, and she came into the house and she just said, um, I'm here to vacuum your carpets. And I was really surprised, this sister has a hard time, she uh, probably had no business vacuuming my carpets, but she knew, she knew me, she knew what I needed in my life and she vacuumed my carpets for me while I sat with my broken leg. What comes to mind is my daughter who is, uh, she has epilepsy. And seeing how others not knowing her, didn't understand her, treated her. And it, it taught me in my life that if we want to love somebody, we have to know them and know what they're going through. If we don't take the time to get to know them, then we don't know what they're struggling with.
when um, I was pregnant with my third child, which would be Bethany, and I was really sick. I had a real bad condition and was hospitalized and, and just concerned. I don't think I was six months pregnant and concerned about her and in a lot of pain and, and just feeling really down and depressed and uh, home by myself in a dark room and the kids, other kids had gone to the nursery and just, you know, worried about her, worried about what the future would hold. And a knock on my door and I was a sister um, is no longer in our ward, but she came and brought me just a little bowl of beef stew. And you know, that little thing just, it didn't stay long. She knew I didn't feel good, but just that, that little, that little gift, um, kindness, compassion, just meant the world to me, made a big difference for me. And that's, that's one example I would give of true, you know, compassion. When I think of the phrase, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, I think of the golden rule. And just being kind when it's hard to, loving when it's hard to, just no matter the reason, we're all human and just loving others because that's what we want in return. And I also think when I hear the word hope to have done unto me, I think that doesn't come with an expectation because sometimes we think well I would have done this but if we just hope that someone will do it, it we won't get so frustrated when sometimes things don't go the way we wanted. Sometimes I don't recognize that other people need the same mercy that I am expecting and sometimes I get wrapped up on what I am expecting, I'm expecting all of these things to be forgiven and I'm expecting mercy, so shouldn't I give other people the same sort of break and, um, and be kinder to them as well and extend the hand of forgiveness? So I had to get better with that, that the mercy is going to be extended by Jesus Christ to them also. My mother-in-law, who suffered from post-polio and Parkinson's, and her hands had shriveled up, and she was not able to open her fingers, and it made her life difficult. And she would get very frustrated because the most basic things were hard for her to do with her hands clenched. And when I think of we are his hands, what if we tried for one day to go without using our hands? How difficult our life would be. And if that just that simple thing of helping be someone's hands and be that service for somebody, that might be the most basic of needs but we are if we're able to provide that for somebody else how great that service would be church and look happy just like anyone else but I could be feeling pretty awful inside and I've noticed that they have come in 
times of my need that they weren't even aware of. At church, I tend to carry a lot of things, and there's one woman in particular that will help carry my bags, and there's others who have helped as well besides her, but just the physical act of someone picking up a bag off my shoulder, it gives me a sense of um, just physical burden being lifted off my shoulder, literally, and it also emotionally makes me feel loved that, hey, there's someone out there that they're doing something so simple as taking my bag, but it makes me feel loved and cared about, and it's something that anybody could do, and I just really appreciate that. I remember coming to the Rootstown Ward in 1985, and I was involved in a car accident. I broke my neck, and so I had a halo brace, you know, where you have the um, rods sticking out and I remember so much trepidation about going to the ward and so then I remember walking into the building and thinking oh like somebody's not going to recognize that I have this halo brace right and just this feeling of wow you're really going to stick out because of that and what are people going to say and what are people going to do and everybody was so welcoming. Obviously, it was a little bit of a draw when you see somebody in a halo brace. Um, and so, um, but nobody really paid too much attention to it. They said, you know, oh gee, what happened? But everybody was very welcoming and only was in the ward about six months and then moved to Canton and then ironically moved back in 2005 and had a hard time, um, had gotten a divorce, and so wasn't feeling, was feeling broken and not very put together. And the ward made me feel um, really great, the sisters in the ward, and it was a very good experience. It was just like coming home. When, right before I got baptized, I was visiting this ward right here. And I just walked to the door, and Sister Stavis just gave me a hug. And I thought, wow, what an amazing sister to even um, do that for someone who didn't even know me. So I, um, I just gave her a hug back. I said, thank you. And um, the next day I came to the um, ward, and I, think, I believe it was um, a testimony. And then I heard everybody's testimony, and that really, really grew my testimony. And so I kept coming back, and like a month later, I was baptized. When I think about the phrase, we are his hands, I take it a lot of ways. My first thought is that Heavenly Father has a lot of children. He's got a lot of children who are living on this earth and he can't, I mean I guess he probably could physically somehow be there for everyone, give everyone a pep talk, but it's not the point. And I think a lot of times maybe we focus on the larger ways that we're there for each other, but what we can do is follow those promptings and even if it's something little you send them a card in the mail I think that is how Heavenly Father uses us as his hands to comfort his people
I can't do, I can't make peace in the entire world. I can't feed everybody. I can't do everything, but I can do one thing. I can feed one person. I can be kind to one person. I can make a difference in one person's life. I don't have to make a difference in everybody's life, just one person at a time. And that really touched me that it's my responsibility, it's all of our responsibilities, to reach out to at least one person and maybe make their life better.